players who went out here before you were talking about redemption uh, more night based on what happened in the last game in Montreal. It, I'm sure it seemed to be a game where what could go wrong did go wrong. So you guys are looking to turn it around. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think we've we've uh, we've come a long way in terms of getting our game back in order since that night. Um, so yeah, I think our guys guys want to go in and and redeem themselves from that for sure. But at the same time, just continue to grow and <clears throat> and continue to establish our game. And um, you know, and it's an it's an important game for us. We need to continue to get points here. What sort of improvement have you seen from Mitch's shot? Has he gone on this top three? I'd say the biggest thing is really just his willingness to shoot it. Uh, that's probably the biggest difference, and it's gone in for him a lot more, which of course it encourages him to shoot even more. You know, uh, so so that's it. You know, you look at a lot of his goals. It's been a lot of one touches, whether it's one timer like he did the other night, or one touches in tight around the net. And, you know, uh, being in alone on the goalie, those kind of things. Pucks have gone in for him. He's had a little more luck in the power play this season. Uh, so I, I don't know if he's doing a whole lot different necessarily. I think it's just it's going in for him more. I think he's certainly working um, before and after practices. You know, our skill sessions that we have is off season. You know, it's been top of mind, but I think it's been top of mind for him for as long as he's been in the league. Um, I think he's just continued to work at it. And, you know, the, the dominance that his line has had with Austin and Bunch there has helped. So all those things are just contributing to like, a more confident shooter. I don't sense that necessarily right now. I, you know, I think that you know the more that happens, um, where Mitch is, is scoring and shooting, it gives not so much the opposition much to think about. I think it's it, it plays on the goaltender more. Uh, you know, the goalies as they are scanning the ice and trying to find the threats. A lot of times, you know, they may overlook Mitch and, and look to find Austin. Um, so the more willing he is to shoot the puck and all of that, they, they, they have to check off on that option. They have to respect it. And uh, that creates more opportunities for Bunce and Austin. Um, but also at the same time, you know, uh, benefits the entire line and, and ultimately, you know, benefits Mitch. Too, he's, he's recognizing those benefits that because there's so much respect for Austin out there, and so much attention on it that uh, when he can just deliver the puck to the net himself, there's opportunities there because they are a little off guard. What, what role does Bunting play in all of that? What you're talking about? Oh, well, Bunce has been great on the line all the way through. He has, he gets the puck, uh, he gets the puck in the neutral zone or coming over the line. He can make a play on it. Uh, when he needs the forecheck, he's on the forecheck. He creates loose pucks for guys. He's around the net and creating havoc and drawing attention that way. Um, you know, you look at the goal they scored the other night. It was pretty textbook type entry, side changes, using the back of the net uh, where Bunce is there to kick it over to Austin. And then they, they make the connection in, in the slot to Mitch. Like, those three guys are very much on the same page, and, and Bunce is carrying his weight. What's the thought process behind having someone like Timothy on the second class? Uh, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. Um, not necessarily specific to Lily, but just more so with the second unit. You know, given that we're we're obviously a, you know first unit heavy. You know, they they take the bulk of the minutes. You know, minute twenty, minute thirty uh, sometimes. <clears throat> so the second unit's not getting a lot, and when you get out there with thirty, forty seconds, plus you have to factor in a little bit of chaos in the last 10, 15 seconds to get your second defenseman back on, make sure you're in good posture defensively when the, their player comes out of the box. You're kind of selling the PP a little bit short there. So you were losing 15 seconds, and the, and the second power play when they get out there is really in a rush, and, uh, and it's, it puts a lot of heat on them, a lot of pressure on them. So we we're thinking with putting two defensemen out there allows them just to settle down, utilize the time that they have, and really just settle into to five on five play again from there. So that's really the the mindset behind it. You know, we wanted to get Lily some reps today uh, in that spot. Uh, I suspect we'll, we'll we'll move it around and mix it around. At times you'll see you'll see us go with four forwards there. It'll all be kind of dependent on what's going on in the clock. But we do think it's important to get some reps with two defensemen out there throughout the rest of the season. Is that also just because of 
right shot, so maybe it sends a puck over? Uh, that's part of it, you know. Like it's, he's a one-timer option from there. You know, I've I've used the Lee in the power play a lot in the American League, and mainly on the top, not so much on that flank there. But he has the ability to do it. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> has the ability to do it. Um, but it, it, it's more just kind of spreading out the minutes. And right now he's playing with Geo, so it's it's an easy it was an easy decision. We didn't overthink that one. It was more just about the idea of of going to three forwards, two defensemen, so we can just flow a little bit easier into five-on-five five play, but also think we could get more out of the power play because they can maximize the time entirely versus, you know, you know, kind of making that decision 10, 15 seconds earlier about how do we get back in defensive posture here. Um, or if that sometimes goes the other way where they feel like they want to overstretch it and then you leave yourself vulnerable the other way. So that's that's how we've looked at it and something that uh, Spencer's felt strongly about um, even before this season began and we've kind of fought that urge to do it but we think you know, with uh, under 20 games here left that uh, we should get some reps at it. Shalgren tomorrow and yeah. Peter will go on Sunday so we just thought uh, I thought I thought Mrazic was really good the other night uh, even more so now after having watched it back um, so you know we knew that he was going to get two out of the three games this gives him a little bit longer break but also gets uh, Shalgren back going uh, who also has played well for us as we've talked about so uh, you need to use two guys here in particular with Peter and his some of the injuries he's fought through the year. We don't want to overwork that and we want to get Shelgren back in. It's be interesting for Shelgren to, to play in that kind of theater atmosphere in Montreal Saturday night. It's a you know, yeah. game. And sure, yeah, it's a great opportunity for him. Like I think he's I think he's earned it. Like we talked about at a time when you know we really needed to stop the bleeding in goal. He, he came in and did that for us. So uh, the players have played well in front of him. They've got confidence in him. So uh, it's you know it's a pretty natural decision to, to give him one of these two games. Practice, but it looked like he was getting closer. He joined teammates some of it Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he really is from a health perspective. I think he, he really could have taken on more today. We just because we got Shalgren and Mrazic to play these next two days with no practice time in there. We felt it was important those guys uh, had the net, uh, but he got lots of work in in that skill session. Uh, I thought he looked outstanding, he, both in terms of how he worked, how he competed. And there wasn't a whole lot going by him, so that's a really good sign. I think he'll just continue to to work and uh, progress from here. Is there a timeline for Jack at all? Or is yeah, there is. We're just going to continue to ramp it up. Not a lot of practice time for us upcoming here, but he's not going to come with us to Montreal. But uh, um, my understanding is he's going to come with us to Boston and allows him to get a better skate with us, and then we kind of take it from there. We got a practice day after that. And then we'll sort of see where things go from there based on how he's feeling. But it's been a steady improvement all the way through. And uh, his feedback from today and from what I observed uh, with my eyes uh, when he was out there, that he's working his way uh, back here and he's not far off. Talking about the second PP there, what's the key for the top guys to get going again there? <clears throat> I think just this increased urgency, getting on the same page, being connected again with it. Um, Recognizing that now that you've moved yourself to the top of the league, uh, it, teams are taking you even more serious. I mean, the guys have always respected our our skill skill level, but when our team, when our when that unit especially was connected and moving the puck quickly and attacking the net and organized on breakouts and good on faceoffs, we're we're a lot to handle. Um, but the teams are preparing for that. You know, I, I, like I've, I've talked about before, if you're running a penalty kill and you've got the number one power play upcoming on your schedule, you're really digging in on that. You don't want to look bad. Um, so it's just the mindset of our guys, uh, making sure we're having them prepared, making sure they're ready to have, recognize the urgency. We haven't had a lot of actual power plays either, so it's been tough to, to get rhythm that way. And then there's been times we haven't had any and all of a sudden you get them kind of back to back. We've got to recognize the urgency of each power play, no matter when it comes, and, and just get back to being connected on it. And um, you know, I think it's a good opportunity to get a little bit of a reset today on that in, on that front. And you know, it's going to be important for us the rest of the way, of course. We haven't seen Tosh in a while. Is, is there, has he been diagnosed with something in that timeline? Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say he's been diagnosed with anything necessarily. They just continue to to you know give him time and assess him. 
Uh, there's no real update. I, in fact, I haven't even heard uh, you know much on him other than he's not going to be available this week. Is it identical to Muzzin at all, or, or is it just completely different? No, it's just different. Muzz obviously is progressing really well here. Uh, Cash's situation is independent of that.